The public interest is not always the same as the national. Going to war with people who are not our enemy in places that are not a threat doesn't make us sick. And more and more private information is digitized. I think the most important idea is to remember that there have been times throughout American history where what is right is not the same as what is legal. Sometimes to do the right thing, you have to break it up. Over time, that awareness of wrongdoing sort of builds up, and you feel compelled to talk about it. And the more you talk about it, the more you're ignored, the more you're told it's not a problem. Until eventually you realize that uh, these things need to be determined by the public, not by somebody who was simply hired by the government. mistakes are made, which is inevitable in any large and complicated human enterprise, they correct those mistakes. And two independent White House panels who reviewed all of the classified evidence said these programs have never stopped a single terrorist attack that was imminent in the United States. So is it really terrorism that we're stopping? Do these programs have any value at all? I say no, and all three branches of the American government say no as well. They're not abusing authorities in order to listen to your butt, phone calls, or read your emails. We have a right to privacy. We require warrants to be based on probable cause or some kind of individualized suspicion because we recognize that trusting anybody, any, any government authority with the entirety of human communications in secret and without oversight is simply too great a temptation to be ignored. After all, the folks at NSA and other intelligence agencies are our neighbors. They're our friends and family. They've got the electronic bank and medical records like everybody else. They have kids on Facebook and Instagram. Your rights matter because you never know when you're going to Beyond that, it's a part of our cultural identity, not just in America but in Western societies and in democratic societies around the world. The unique power of the state, it is not enough for leaders to say, trust us, we won't abuse the data we collect. For history has too many examples when that trust has been breached. Terrorism is something that provokes an emotional response that allows people to rationalize authorizing uh, powers and programs that they wouldn't give other powers. About the balance between security and liberty. But what we saw is in the post 9 11 era, they used secrecy and they used the justification of terrorism to start these programs in secret without asking Congress, without asking the American people. And it's that kind of government behind closed doors that we need to guard ourselves against because it makes us less safe and it offers no value. Uh, Gilbert Keith 
Chesterton. In his, uh, I think, The Man Who Was Thursday novel, he ironically, but nonetheless seriously, proposed to install, I quote, a special corps of policemen, policemen who are also philosophers. Here is a quote. The work of the philosophical policeman is at once bolder and more subtle than that of the ordinary detective. The ordinary detective goes to pothouses to arrest thieves. We go to artistic tea parties to detect pessimists. The ordinary detective discovers from a diary that a crime has been committed. We discover from a book of sonnets that a crime will be committed. We have to trace the origin of those dreadful thoughts that drive men on at last to intellectual fanaticism and intellectual crime." End of quote. Now this may sound a crazy eccentric idea, but would thinkers as different as Karl Popper, Theodor Adorno and Emmanuel Levinas, would they not subscribe all of them to maybe a slightly changed version of this idea, where actual political crime is called totalitarianism and the philosophical crime is condensed in the notion of totality. The idea is that a straight road leads from philosophical notion of totality to political totalitarianism, or as we usually ironically put it, the line from Pla Plato to Plato, you know, like, like. And the task of philosophical police is to discover from a book of Plato's dialogues, or like Rousseau's treatise on social contract, that a political crime will be committed. The ordinary political policeman goes to secret organizations to arrest revolutionaries. The philosophical policeman goes to philosophical symposia to detect the proponents of totality. So what should we reply to this accusation? I claim it holds. We are doing this intellectuals, just not in the way Chesterton thought. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Hmm.